In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down five AAU basketball plays that you can run with your team. Let's get down. Let's check these out really quickly. If you want an unbeatable basketball zone defense, make sure to go check out the link down in the description below. And if you've been wondering why I haven't been posting videos, I lost my voice. So let's get down. Let's check these out. So I actually really like to run the five out offense very well and obviously as a standard. And this first play... I like to call four out, and it's a four out play. So let's say this is Jimmy on this side, right? And we call four out Jimmy. Jimmy will go to the high post. Player two will then go down to the, the corner, and player one will then dribble out towards this right side. Once this happens, player one is going to try and get that ball into Jimmy in that high post. When that happens, player three, as well as player one, will cut towards the basket, and these are our number one options to pass to. When they're cutting, we're going to have player two and player five move up to the wing, and obviously their defenders will be following with them. At this time, if player one and three are not open in the post or when they were cutting, they're going to then fill out, and depending on how of course, we like to run our team. If they're a more advanced team, you can do more advanced stuff. But the next option, the secondary options, are kickout passes to player 2 and 5. If, for example, player 5 gets that ball, player 4 will then set a screen on player 5's defender. Player 5 will then use that screen. Player 4 will then roll to the basket. If this is open, he can pass to player 4. And that would be for a layup. And if that wasn't open, player 3 will then fill out, player 4 will then fill out, and we're back into our 5 out offense with player 5 being at the point. Another great play that you can run with an AAU basketball team is out of the 5 out. And this one I like to call STS because that's exactly what you're going to be doing. You're going to be running a screen the screener basketball play. So player 5 is going to pass over to player 3. And then he's going to go and set a screen onto player two. Player two is going to use that screen. He's going to go and screen for player three. When he goes and screens for player three, what we're hoping for is there to be a lot of switches involved. Player three is going to use that screen, and player two is going to roll off of that screen. Player three could have that shot. He could pass to player two. That could be a layup as well. Anytime usually when you get that ball into the paint, help side defense is going to come out, in which case this would be a three-point shot for player one. You can even lump this in with, of course, your offense, where now, for example, let's say they were able to cover this off. Well, then at that point, we can then have, again, a still in our five-out offense. And you can run any five-out play. You can run a, a pass and cut play. There's so much options that you have, but look at what we have here. This would be a huge mismatch anyways. So player one, being guarded by a slower, generally speaking, player five, could be just an easy drive. So far, that's two plays that are super simple. Both ran out of a five-out offense to start. And if you want to check out the complete guide to the five-out offense, go check out the link down in the description below. Another fantastic play that you can run is this one where we can start in horns. You can actually technically start this in five out as well. And you would just call horns and these guys would just pop in. It's super simple. You could actually, and how I like to run horns myself is out of the five out. Again, I really am a fan of the five out. And how I would run it out of the five out is have the big guys start in the corners. That's just to get extra off ball movement. And then have these guys pop up to the elbows. Once they get to the elbows and players three and two would pop down to the corners. This is just extra off ball movement. You may have options that present themselves if there's off ball movement before your play even starts. But we can have player five setting that screen for player one and player four setting an off ball screen for player two. With these screens happening, player one can use that screen. Player five would roll towards the basket. Now there's a few different options that present themselves here. So with what's going on here, you may have the opportunity to swing that ball over to player two for a three. You may be able to get that ball into player five for a layup. Or if there was a switch here and player two then still chased his man and there was a massive mistake, you may also have player four who could be open for a layup or for a three-point shot as well. 
This next play is fantastic against a zone, specifically a 2-3 zone. I've heard of teams calling this 13-1-3-1. I've also heard of teams calling this poster or lob. And basically what you're looking for here is if you've got a player who's either bigger than everybody else or somebody who can dunk, you can call this poster because he'd be posterizing people. And what you want to do here is have the ball swung around the top until they can get an entry pass into the high post. And that's going to be key. Because when that pass goes in, in the 2-3 zone that's going to lift player 5, player 5 blue will cut across the key slowly shuffling and getting ready to, of course, jump. Because player 4 could lob that ball for a dunk. He can bounce past that ball for an alley-oop. There's a whole bunch of different options here. But that's just the idea behind the play, what your ultimate goal is with the play. However, there's a lot of off-ball movement. Some teams will do more than others. However, this is a fantastic one that you can run. Again, some, player, some coaches will instead just have player 1 and 3 and 2 just pass the ball around until they can get that ball in. However, the issue with that, in my opinion, is if you pass the ball to player 3, player 2 stays here. He doesn't drop down to the high post. He, does, he just stays here and covers both men. However, if we can get player 1 after he makes that pass to quickly switch with player 2, right? And that can then leave player 2 down lower to guard the high post. With player 3 passing that ball up to player 2, we then have player 1 and 3 looping around the baseline. What happens here now is this draws up both players. These guys are worried more, of course, about the wings, which lifts up the defense. And then if we can get that pass right away into player 4, or if we can get that pass quickly to player 1 to get it into player 4, whatever it may be. But I can almost guarantee you, you should be able to get that pass from the point into the high post after these guys swing. You want to get these guys out of the key first before you pass into the, the high post. That will then, of course, lift up these wings because they're worried about them, but getting that ball into the high post lifts this up so that it's an absolutely easy layup, in this case, for player 5. A nice quick hitter that you can do against the zone, this is, this is going to be play number 5. A quick hitter that you can run is this. You get player 4 on the far side to come up and set a screen on this side of the zone. He comes up and sets that screen. Player 1 quickly attacks the paint. The idea here by attacking the paint is by drift or bringing up player 5 and putting 4 in a position where will he cover player 5 or will he cover player 3. If he covers player 5, then it's a kick out for a 3 point shot. If he stays in the middle, it's a pass down to player 5 for a layup. Or if he covers the, uh, the high, the 3 point shot, not thinking about player 5, then it can be a layup for player 5 as well. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.